G'day guys. How's it going? Check this out. I've got these little rubber bands in it. They're bloody so much easier than those metal things. Anyway, let's not get off track here. So I thought I'd make a video and uh, started off today um, with creatine. All right. Now I'm going to periodically do videos about supplements and um you know i mean there's not a lot out there obviously um you know there's variations of everything but the basis is all you know very similar so what i wanted to do today is talk about creatine 101 okay what it is and what it does all right now what creatine is is it's a naturally occurring substance in our body um and it's basically stored in our muscle tissue, uh, and it's called uh, phosphocreatine, okay? It's uh, basically an enhancement to our energy system, which is our adenosine triphosphate. Now, I'm going to get more into that a little later. But basically, 95% of creatine in our body is stored in our muscles, and 5% in our brain and, uh, and organs. M more of it in the brain than the organs. So basically, that's where it's stored, Okay. Now, we use creatine uh, as an energy source, okay? Like I said, it's an enhancement to ATP. But uh, again, we'll get into that a little more in a second. Now, creatine is a number one supplement for improving performance in the gym, okay? It's probably the biggest buzzword. It's the one that's been around the longest. Now, studies have shown that, it, that creatine can increase muscle mass, strength, um, and exercise performance, all right? Um, additionally, it provides a number of um, other health benefits, such as protecting against um, neurological diseases. So it's beneficial for older people to actually take creatine. But again, I'll get into that a little more later. Some people believe creatine is unsafe and has many side effects. But uh, out of thousands, literally thousands of studies, there's been no conclusive evidence that it causes any issues. People speculate that it hurts kidneys and livers and things like that. Now, they've taken men that have dosed five grams a day for five years and no issues with kidneys or liver. And they've even tested guys that have taken 30 grams for up to four to five years and no issues. Um, now, creatine for me, I first heard of it back in 1997. And you couldn't even buy it in Australia because I believe it was classed as a performance enhancer. So they banned it straight away. Um, so I was purchasing it out of New Zealand and to get 2.2 pounds of it or one kilo, it cost $100 and this back in 97. Okay. So I've been using creatine on and off for, you know, the best part of what, 22, 23 years now. Um, now it's, it's a good thing. Creatine is amazing. It has a lot of different benefits and, um, further in the video, I'm going to cover some of those benefits to help you guys make a decision whether do you want to use creatine for yourself or not. Now, creatine is one of the world's most tested supplements, okay? And obviously, that's why it's the most popular in the world because, you know, it's it's been out there for a long time. It has no side effects. It's causing no issues and you're getting performance benefits from it. So why wouldn't it be number one, right? When you supplement with creatine, basically what you're doing is you're increasing your body's stored phosphocreatine. And in essence, it's uh, basically stored as energy in your cells. Okay. And then it helps your body produce more of the high energy molecule, which is called ATP. Now, ATP is adenosine triphosphate, in case you're wondering what it was. It's basically called the body's currency. Okay. When you have more ATP, your body can perform better during exercise. Creatine also alters several cellular processes that lead to increased muscle mass, strength, and recovery. Okay, so I mentioned adenosine triphosphate or ATP. Um, basically, ATP is where you get your energy to lift, okay, um, or sprint. Any high intensity or lifting exercise is going to call on ATP. Um, now, to give you an example how it works, ATP lasts around 8 to 10 seconds. So therefore, you uh, can put that into consolidation with the fact that when you do weight training, 
you'll fail between eight and 12 reps of high intensity when you're actually trying to build mass. The reason why you fail is your ATP is gone, okay? You've basically blown it out. After you've done a set of say eight to 12 and you actually failed, it takes around one minute for around 80% of your ATP to replenish, okay? And this is why they say take a minute's break. If you want it to replenish 100%, it takes around three minutes for all your ATP to replenish. Now, what creatine does, it actually helps give you a bit of a boost, okay? So you may only have your ATP lasting eight to 10 seconds with the creatine supplementation, you may get an extra two, three seconds out of it, okay? Therefore, you get more volume that helps increase strength, increase muscle mass, okay? So there are other ways that it helps as well. But what I wanted to talk to you about real quick is um, a couple of different creatines, okay? Now, this is the most common, creatine monohydrate. Now, all the studies and research I've read, even though there's other variations of creatine, this one is still classed as, the, as number one. And I think it's more because there's just not enough conclusive evidence to support that the other ones are, are any better. Now, creatine monohydrate is water soluble. So what that means, it basically, um, it's gonna make you retain a little water. That's not a bad thing. Water retention is not bad when it comes to muscle mass, okay? You do need some water retention of hydration. So anyway, now when you supplement creatine, you start with a loading phase and it's it differs. Some people say you should be taking, um, uh, what, four servings of five grams uh, a day. And then others have said six a day for seven days. And that's a loading phase. Now, you don't have to load creatine. You can take just five grams a day, but it's going to take you about three to four uh, weeks before you actually get to a, a sufficient store of creatine. So monohydrate. Um, and again, there's been no studies ever performed to say that this stuff is bad for you. Now, I've got a couple others here. This is alkaline. Now, this is buffered creatine, okay? And, and this is hydrochloride. Now, look how tiny these little tubs are. Now, this this should take 5 grams per serving, okay? This one you take 750 milligrams, and this one you take 1 gram. So, this has got 100 servings in it. This one has 75 servings. And this one has 180 servings. So, you can see the difference. Now, so a lot of people being budget conscious, they're going to go for the monohydrate anyway. Um but more studies have been done on this than these. So does this have benefit? I'm sure it does. Now, I believe that there is a creatine ethyl ester as well. I've actually taken creatine ethyl ester. Now, with creatine ethyl ester and these guys here, they're fat soluble. So they basically can get through the fat lipid into the cell. Now, again, there hasn't been enough studies done on them. Now, back to the monohydrate. When you take monohydrate, it's best to take it with some kind of sugar source because basically you'll get an insulin spike and the sugar will actually shuttle the, um, or the insulin rather, will shuttle the, the creatine straight into the muscle cell. So yeah, there we go, creatine monohydrate. Now creatine helps with uh, gaining muscle by boosted workload that I talked to you about before. And that's basically where you're getting the couple of extra seconds of ATP which means you get more reps, which means you're getting more microtrauma, okay? More microtrauma means you're going to grow more muscle mass. It's as simple as that. Improved cell signaling, okay? Creatine can help increase satellite cell sign signaling, which aids muscle repair and new muscle growth. Um, you've heard of stem cell research and things like that. That kind of goes along the same lines as satellite cells in a sense. Raised anabolic hormones, Okay, studies note a rise in hormones such as IGF-1, which is insulin growth factor one, after taking creatine. Another thing it's gonna help is increased cell hydration, okay? It, um, it lifts your body's water content. So in other words, you're gonna retain a little bit more water as I talked about before. Um, so you're gonna have more water in the muscle cells, which causes cell volumization effect and can play a role in muscle growth. So obviously, like I said, getting water into the muscle is not a bad thing because you always hear, oh, water retention. Now, if you're trying to get on stage, of course, it's going to hinder that. But, you know, how many of us are actually going to go get on stage? Pfft, yeah, 0.11%, if that. 
I said 0.11%. What is that? 0.001%? That sounds better, doesn't it? Anyway, another study has shown that it is a possibility that creatine reduces protein breakdown. And in essence, less protein breakdown means less muscle breakdown. So that's that's definitely going to help you keep your, your muscle mass. Another thing that it, it is good for, it, it lowers myostatin levels. Now, what myostatin is, it's a protein that actually inhibits muscle growth. I bet you didn't know about that. You know, we all go on about, we have to get protein, protein, protein. Well, there's a protein that inhibits muscle growth. So creatine can actually reduce myostatin levels. So that's definitely going to help with the muscle mass gain. Creatine is effective for both short and long-term muscle gain. So um, it assists many different people, including sedentary individuals, older adults, and elite athletes. So it really is pretty broad of, of who it can actually help. One 12-week study that was conducted with a bunch of weightlifters found that just um, in that 12-week time, they actually put on two to three times more muscle than they would have without creatine. Um, I think that with creatine, a lot of people just don't use it properly. You know, they're sporadic with it. You just can't do it, you know, here and there. You've got to take it every day to keep your, um, your, your uh, creatine stores in your body at a sufficient level. So you can call on them every time you do your weight training sessions. Now, if you Google creatine monohydrate or what is the best creatine, it's funny because the creatine monohydrate comes up. A large study was done and found that creatine was selected as the single most beneficial supplement for adding muscle mass. And you know, the crazy thing is some of this stuff I didn't even know myself. So I'm learning new things for me, which is awesome. So, but, um, but I do take this, okay? I've been taking this for a while now. In one study, it was found that creatine actually helped increase training performance by about 8%, um, weightlifting performance by about 14%, and about 43% of one rep max on bench press. Um, no, like, that's amazing, 43%. Like, if you were benching 100 pounds, you could have done 143 pounds after the, um, the study of the creatine. Now, one thing that um, you probably didn't know about creatine is I mentioned that 5% of it is stored in the brain, okay? So it does impact your brain greatly. And it's found that creatine supplementation, okay, can help improve conditions like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Huntington's, ischemic stroke, epilepsy, and brain and spinal cord in injuries. So you know, it's not just about getting in the gym and putting on some mass, okay? This stuff can actually help other people as well. So it's an amazing thing. Um, anyway, I, uh, I think that's pretty much it. But uh, I think I gave you plenty of information. Um, so these are the little puppies right here. So, yeah. But honestly, I think this one was about $17. This one was... 15 or 16 and this one here was $20 okay so you're basically getting about twice as many servings with this but I don't know how you can even get I mean with one gram and 750 milligrams I'm just not sure how effective this stuff would be so so at the end of the day stick to old faithful here okay it's cheap and it works you you can't go past it good old creatine monohydrate good stuff anyway guys um i hope you got something out of this video is there if there's any supplements you want me to review by all means please let me know um i am going to be talking about um essential amino acids soon and about branch chain amino acids now the benefits of of each okay branch chains is three amino acids essential amino acids is actually nine amino acids so i am going to break those down for you if I can get my words out of my head, I'll tell you what, I don't know what's going on today. I just can't even speak properly. But um, that's it, guys. I appreciate you. Like and subscribe. Um, hit the little bell so you get the notifications that I have a new video up. And all four of you that watch my videos, I love you guys. Peace.